Hi guys, it is a gray, gloomy winter day in May here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. We're trying to get this picture of uh, Mother Nature hitting Mad Max, but I uh, don't think we're going to get the picture of Mother Nature hitting Mad Max to stay up for us here. <laughs> Anyway, guys, we will have to work on the, the set here at Collapse Chronicles, but it is Friday, May 7th. Uh, feels more like January 7th. Talking about snow here tonight. Snowing at Bugs in a Jar Farm here in outside of Ithaca, New York on Friday, May 7th, 2021, but since it is Friday, been a long day out in the boonies, but since it is Friday, we are going to finally get around to doing what we do every Friday here on Collapse Chronicles, and that is heading over to mongabay.com to see what is on the minds of Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over there bringing us their weekly roundup, the various ways Mother Nature is taking a bullet uh, the last week, and as we usually do, we're going to start over there in the Brazilian Amazon, yes, with this shocking story, deforestation-free beef stymied by Brazil's unequal supply chain. That is a mumbo-jumbo way of saying a decade after signing agreements to ban deforestation caused by the beef industry, cattle ranching continues to be the leading cause of deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon. And it breaks down the various reasons why. Uh, this is the reason I do not eat beef. Okay, you will not believe that a water crisis in Indonesia has been linked to mining. Hmm. Many parts of Indonesia's East Nusa Tenggara province have experienced a shortage of clean water since last year. Yes, environmental activists attribute the problem to environmental degradation in forested water catchment areas, including by mining companies. Hmm. Women and children in several areas now have to walk up to six miles to get drinking water from privately run tanker trucks. Yes, even in the capital of Kupang, 36 percent of households reportedly now lack access to clean water. Uh, no, no lack of access to clean water at Bugs in a Jar Farm. There's no chance of dying of thirst here. Uh, if you're lacking clean water, come see me at Bugs in a Jar. Okay, what is Bozo Nero up to? Brazil's Bozo Nero vowed to work with indigenous people. Now he is investigating them. Do you think so? Uh, at least two top indigenous leaders in Brazil were re recently summoned for questioning by the federal police over allegations of slander against the government of President Jair Bolsonaro. It's a good thing I am not a top indigenous leader in Brazil. I think it's safe to say I, I would probably uh, be at the bottom of some mining pit, is my guess by now. Uh, anyway, the NGO Human Rights Watch says it is deeply concerned about the government's moves and called any retaliation 
against indigenous people a, quote, flagrant abuse of power. Yes. Uh, under Bozo Nero, deforestation has reached its highest level since 2008. Invasions of indigenous territories increased 135% in 2019, and the persecution of government critics under a draconian national security law has skyrocketed. All right. Okay. Wait, I was just asking this same question about another animal, and I'm already forgetting which one of these uh, animals, but here we go again. Did you realize that one, one giant anteater can eat 30,000 30, insects per day? And uh, for the second time uh, in a few weeks, uh, obviously, we need to eradicate giant anteaters off the face of the planet to, uh, to you know, stop the insect apocalypse. You're wondering where the hell all the insects are going. The damn giant anteaters are eating them all. But it's a good thing to know that giant anteaters will be extinct here in a few years. So uh, the insect apocalypse may get a get a, uh, a reset after they've gunned down the last giant anteater. Three cheers for eradicating those pesky anteaters. All right. Uh, I am not even going to get into how we can prevent the next pandemic. Yes, mm, we're not even going to, already talking, you know, the, you know, the pandemic uh, that is going to make this pandemic seem like in comparison. All right, did you realize <clears throat> that relocating mangroves you know, that are in the way of this new Indonesian highway, relocating mangroves is not that, quote, this is a quote from an expert, is not that easy. Yes, do you think so? Uh, Indonesia is building a toll road and, and levee along the north coast of Java Island, uh, the project will cut through swaths of mangrove forest, some of which will be relocated. Yes, an environmental expert, yes, I'm sure it's Sancho Panza, the environmental expert, Sancho Panza has warned against the mangrove relocation plan, noting that, uh, the, you know, the attempt will likely lead to failed growth of the trees in their new home. Yes, I can, I can imagine moving mangrove trees to make room for a toll road in Java. All right, here we go. This is kind of a takeoff on Jared Diamond, guns, germs, and steel. Instead of guns, germs, and steel, we have casinos, condos and sugar cane, how a Cambodian national park is being sold down the river. Yes, this is Botum Sakor National Park in Cambodia has already lost at least 30,000 hectares. That's 75,000 acres. The national park already has lost 75,000 acres um, dating back, this is dating back through decades of environmental degradation, go back to the 1990s when the Cambodian government began handing out economic land concessions for the development of commercial plantations and tourist infrastructure. Yes. Uh, 
the government says economic activity, you know, inside federally protected national parks is vital to improve people's livelihoods and reduce poverty. All right, I am so thrilled I should have led off with this. This is from my regular contributor to Manga Bay, this fellow who I, I think I, didn't I interview Philip Fernside a while back? I'm pretty sure that I actually made it to my interview with Philip. Uh, but he is finally uh, talking about the very thing I have been talking about is this whole BS designation of illegal forest deforestation, which is, which to me, you know, I mean, what is the difference? Deforestation is deforestation, legal or illegal. Uh, all of this crap about the word illegal deforestation uh, I, I, I guess making you say, well, legal deforestation must be fine. Finally, thank you, Philip Fernside, for weighing in on this. I might have to come back and, and do a full uh, rant on this essay. Zero illegal deforestation. One more Bozo Nero Distortion. This is a commentary by Dr. Fernside. <clears throat> At U.S. President Joe Biden's virtual climate summit on Earth Day last week, Brazilian President Jair Bozo Nero promised, quote, zero illegal deforestation by 2030, close quote. Zero illegal deforestation, we're, we're back to Philip. zero illegal deforestation can be achieved in two ways. Number one, by stopping deforestation, or number two, by legalizing the deforestation that is taking place. The second path is now in full swing. In, in Brazil and all over this planet. This is not limited to Brazil, as, as Philip knows, that uh, you, just call, you just call the deforestation legal deforestation, and there you go. You can have net zero illegal deforestation by making 100% of deforestation in your country legal. This is, uh, th th this is a real brain teaser. A series of laws facilitating land grabbing, which in Brazil and elsewhere means large-scale illegal appropriation of government land is being fast-tracked in the National Congress with support from Bozonero once grabbed land is, quote, legalized it, the deforestation on the land can then be, quote, amnestied, and subsequent deforestation is therefore legally permitted. The end result is more deforestation, all deforestation, legal or not, causes climate change. And, uh, of course, Rhett has to put in the note, the views expressed are those of the author and Sam Mitchell, not necessarily Manga Bay. Okay. All right, we have some good news. South Africa pulls the plug on controversial captive lion industry. All right. Um, anyway, some good news. All right, now, uh, uh, of course, I we've been hearing this one. I'm not going to get into this. Criticizing Brazil over Amazon conservation will likely backfire. 
Again, this is two of these faults from uh, Brazil. Uh, you, you know, and you've heard this before that when the U.S. they're talking about the brewing battle between Biden and uh, and Bozo Nero. Uh, you know, when the U.S. calls out Brazil or any other country about their deforestation practices and anybody in Brazil or any other country can go on to YouTube and put like clear cutting in Oregon and see entire mountainsides obliterated off the face of the planet inside a national forest here in the United States. Uh, that until we get our own house together in the U.S. and practice what we preach to other countries, uh, as long as, you know, as we're uh, our, our national uh, forest service or whatever they call this, uh, which is a branch of the Department of Agriculture. People don't realize that the U.S. Forest Service is under the auspices of the Department of Agriculture. That's how our forests are considered. They are, they're, they're crops is what there are, and, in, and until we cut out the hypocritical BS, it, it's, it's going to backfire. Clean up your own mess, gringo, is what they're saying, and, and, I, and, and I agree with them. But anyway, uh, moving on from that, let's see, let's go to a UNESCO site in Honduras Drugs and agriculture cause deforestation to skyrocket at Honduran UNESCO site. Yes, I have actually been to Honduras's Rio Platano Biosphere Reserve, which occupies a large portion of the country's eastern region. However, despite official protection and recognition by the UN as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, Rio Platano, like every other place uh, in Latin America, is plagued by deforestation. Satellite data show the biosphere lost 13 percent of its primary forest cover between 2002 and 2020 deforestation shot up in 2020, nearly doubling the amount of forest loss over 2019, and we are not going to bring the C word into this rant. <clears throat> 2021 may be another rocky year for the biosphere with reserve with satellite data already showing several unusually high spikes of forest clearing. Sources say deforestation in the reserve is being driven by logging, agriculture, and the drug trade. All right, this is uh, a look at tech, tech giants and no regulation. Despite its exponential growth in the last few years, this uh, greenwashing ESG investing, if you don't know what ESG investing, environment, social, and governance investing is still very unclear and controversial. Um, you know, so you think when you invest in these that uh, according to this greenwashing, you know, you're saving the planet. Yeah, right. According to a study um, by this financial market data and blah, 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 the largest and best known ESG funds invest most of their clients' money in big tech companies like Google, Microsoft, 
Amazon, Apple, and Facebook companies with uh, supposedly a small carbon footprint and high returns for shareholders. Uh, yes, uh, we shall see about that. Uh, so if you think that your Save the Planet fund is saving the planet, you might want to look at the environmental footprints of Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, and Facebook, among others. Gee, where have we heard this uh, story before? I think a few weeks ago, deadly landslide hits Indonesian dam project inside orangutan habitat. Again, a landslide at the site of a hydropower plant located in the only known habitat of the critically endangered Tapanili orangutan has claimed the lives of three people with nine others still missing. We don't have a report on how many dead orangutans. This is the second deadly landslide at the dam in the past five months. Yes, with the project sitting in an area that is prone to natural disasters, including earthquakes, activists say back-to-back -back landslides are reason enough for the area to be protected instead of being licensed for large-scale projects such as mining and hydropower infrastructure. Do you think so? All right, finally, I, 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 again, I've been uh, cheering this on uh, about dehorning rhinos, where they just go out. Uh, you know, what these rhino poachers are after, they're after the horns. I think I, when, when I was like 10 years old, well, if the poachers are killing the rhinos and cutting off their horns, why don't the rangers go out there with the tranquilizer guns, knock out the rhinos, and cut off their horns? Then the poachers won't have any reason to kill the rhinos. Finally, uh, South Africa, uh, South African dehorning initiative aims for zero poached white rhinos. Um, there you go. Conservationists have dehorned the entire white rhino population of Spony Cop Nature Reserve. There you go. Uh, however, experts say there are still grave concern for this near-threatened species, especially as wildlife reserves struggle to maintain security during the... All right. You will not believe that time is running out for embattled Pacific leatherback sea turtles. Marine biologists are warning that the western Pacific leatherback sea turtle could go extinct without immediate conservation measures. Do you think so? The population has decreased at a rate of 5.6% each year for an overall 80% collapse over a 28-year period, according to a recent study. Uh, the Pacific population of leatherbacks are now considered critically endangered, where they face threats like drill, like drift, gill net fishing, ship strikes, and pollution. Oh, Jesus, it goes on and on and on. How about, uh, what's going on with elephant electrocutions? Death of Sri Lankan icon highlights surge in elephant 
electrocutions. Good Lord, this is Ravatha. This uh, iconic male elephant in Sri Lanka died in early March after being electrocuted by an electric fence. Four other elephants died the same way in the same region the same week, highlighting the growing danger posed by illegally electrified fences in the country. In the first three months of this year, at least 100 elephants uh, were killed across Sri Lanka. 21 elephants electrocuted. 18 basically had their heads blown off from eating explosive packed bait and 12 from being shot. The cause of death for the remaining elephants uh, is not known. Uh, farmers in Sri Lanka often hook up their fences directly to power lines which is illegal, and besides being the leading cause of elephant deaths, is also the leading cause of human deaths from electrocution in the country. So, uh, there you go. You will not believe, uh, you will not believe, well, the next, however, me. you will not believe a year after Ecuador oil spill, indigenous victims await justice and reparations. Yes, I think I remember talking about this oil spill. Following an oil spill in the Ecuadorian Amazon that contaminated the Coca River last year, Local indigenous groups relying on the river are still struggling to adapt to alternative livelihoods. At the same time, the land around the river has become increasingly unstable due to accelerated rates of soil erosion. Yes, raising concerns about the integrity of a nearby hydropower dam. All right, and if you uh, have a hard time believing that, see how hard a time you have believing this next headline, Arctic biodiversity at risk <clears throat> as world overshoots climate planetary boundary. Do you think so? <clears throat> the Arctic Ocean biome is changing rapidly warming at twice the rate of the rest of the world. In turn, multi-year sea ice is thinning and shrinking, upsetting the system's natural equilibrium. Thinner ice has now led to massive under-ice phytoplankton blooms, drawing southern species poleward, Fish species from lower latitudes are moving into the Arctic Ocean, displacing and out-competing the native Arctic fish. Uh, meanwhile, predators at the top of the food chain, such as pol polar bears, are suffering the consequences of disappearing ice forced onto land for longer periods of time. Yes. Uh, there you go. Here's a story about a Gambian fishing village tangling with a this big Chinese fishing outfit. I guess three of them stabbed to death. Uh, we are going to wind up in Papua New Guinea to uh, wind up today's ecological meltdown roundup rant. This is a classic. This truly, there could not be a more classic manga bay uh, wrap up. Malaysian firm bidding, bidding to clear 
Papua forest loses its land bid, but deforestation persists. Okay, a conglomerate that had hoped to clear 80,000 hectares, that's about 200,000 acres of rainforest in Indonesian Papua to plant oil palms has lost a court case over its control of the land. Yes, uh, Maxim Global received its permits to clear the land a decade ago, but saw them revoked a few years later by local officials. So you think we finally have some good news, but guess what? Uh, they revoked their permits and granted the permits to another conglomerate, which has already started clearing the forest. And there you go. And, uh, anyway, guys, I've been doing a little of my own forest clearing today, so I hope nobody from Brazil, I hope no Brazilian, uh, environmental activist is coming around uh, coming around uh, bugs in a jar farm good lord with all the chainsaws and everything else we got going in the backyard but uh we'll just keep that our little secret here at bugs in a jar farm but anyway i have got to wrap up this rant because i think i have to go cover my petunias and geraniums uh for the oncoming snowstorm moving in on May the 7th, and I highly suggest you get out there and cover your geraniums while you still can. Come see us at Bugs in a Jar. Yes, little dog. Are you ready to finish this rant? He said, Pop, it's time to give me some dinner. You said something about we're going to go grill some chicken legs tonight before the snow hits. Bye, guys. Ugh.